Big boobs. Hello, it is me, Cat Love or whatever, with Asuka from the critically acclaimed anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. I have some bad news and good news. Bad news is I cannot finish the second Ace Files until December. College is already starting in August 23rd and I have a lot of college shenanigans outside of academic right now, so it's impossible to finish the video without it being rushed. I hope you can understand. The good news is that to make things up, I want to show you people my album collections. Mostly Gorilla since they kickstarted my obsession for collecting albums in the first place, but I have other albums as well. Also this video is unscripted outside of this intro, I only have notes of what I wanted to talk about from each album, so this might be an unorganized mess. I guess let's talk about the non-Gorilla stuff first because there's very few of them to be honest. If you want to skip to Gorilla stuff, just use the timestamps, okay? Okay. Okay, first of all, I would like to apologize if the audio is echoey or if there's some distracting noise in the background. It's because I'm really not feeling to record on my cloth shelf right now. Yes, I record my Ace files on a cloth shelf. It's the only place where I can get a pristine sounding audio, I suppose. But anyway, uh, so this is Lord's Melodrama, released in 2017, and I think it's a really great album actually. It's one of my favorite pop albums of all time. If I had to give it an arbitrary rating, I would give it an 8 out of 10. My favorite song from this album is Supercut, Liability, Hard Feelings, Slash Loveless, Sober, Sober 2, The Louvre, they're all amazing. I don't think there's any skip on this album to be honest. Um, in the future, I definitely would love to buy this album on vinyl. The reason why I want to own a vinyl is because I just want to enjoy the album cover in a much bigger view, I suppose. I know some audiophiles might attack me for this, but can a person just enjoy their vinyl? or what it is, whatever. Please send some hate comments in the comment section. Thank you for supporting me through algorithm, I suppose. So anyway, uh, the back of this album is cracked. I think that is my fault. I actually don't remember why it was cracked. It's just that one day I looked at the back and was like, oh shit, it cracked. Oh yeah, and I just want to remind you guys to stream solar power. Like, I know it's not as good as melodrama, but it's really not that bad. I really love Fallen Fruit. Please give it a stream. You guys are just mean. So next we have Pose, the second studio album from Björk. It rhymes with Jerk. And coincidentally, my second favorite Björk album as well. It's very futuristic and creative, aged very well, and it does not sound like a 90s album at all. It's still very fresh and I can see uh, the possibility of it coming out today and get the same critical acclaim, uh, in my opinion. My favorite songs on this album are Possibly Maybe, Hyper Ballad, Isobel, Army of Me, Enjoy, It's Oh So Quiet, but again, I don't think this album has any skips. And I would love to own this on vinyl with the same shallow reason as why I want to own melodrama on vinyl. Look, let me just enjoy my vinyl in peace, okay? So I'm actually not sure if this is a bootleg CD or not. I was an unexperienced CD buyer when I saw this on an online store listing. All I can think of, wow. This is quite cheap and I can afford this, so it must be real. I mean, it looks real. Yeah, that's basically my mindset. And it got me into buying some bootleg stuff that I deeply regret that I will be talking about later in the video. But I'm still very happy to own this particular copy um, just because the cover itself is very beautiful. 
so it's not really all that bad, you know, <laughs> even if it's bootleg. Next, we have Vespertine. Vespertine? I don't know. This is cracked on Rival, but the seller refunded me, so I think it's all good. They also gave me a CD box replacement, so it's all cool as well. Though I didn't really use the replacement because I can't really move the booklet on there. So I, I ended up using the cracked case. But anyway, this is my third favorite Björk album. And I think you can have a good guess of what my first favorite album is. Yes, of course, it's homogenic. I know it's very basic, but it's just a masterpiece. And I think Pitchfork was right on the money when they gave homogenic a 10. So my favorite songs from this album is Hidden Place, Pagan Poetry, Cocoon, It's Not Up To You, Aurora, Undo, Oh my god, the entire album, it's its just so great, it's beautiful, I have chills listening to it. Even if it's not my favorite, it's still very beautiful. Next is a copy of debut on a cassette tape, and yes, this is a bootleg. I was very dumb for buying it, and it's not like I was getting scammed either. In the listing, the pictures is exactly like this and I really didn't know why I didn't pick up the cues that this is a bootleg copy such as the fact that the picture of Björk it's, it's just not in the middle, I suppose. Okay, but bootleg aside, I think this album is quite enjoyable. My favorite songs are Venus as a Boy, Crying, Big Time Sensuality. Yeah, those are great songs, but to be honest, this album kinda sounds dated. It sounds very 90s, but it's still Björk in the end, so it's still a great album. Just a little bit of fun fact, one of my personal favorite songs of Björk is from a b-side of this album called I Remember You. Yes, I know the song is used for a very unfortunate event, but I think it's a very beautiful song. Okay, we are starting to transition from non-gorilla stuff to gorilla stuff. Starting from this album, The Magic Whip, Blur's latest album released in 2015. So I think this album is really great. Am I gonna be attacked for saying that this is one of Blur's best album? I don't know. I think it's very catchy, it doesn't try to recapture 90s Britpop era for the audience too hard. It's just pretty much Damon jamming with his Blur Squad and I love that for it. My favorite songs from this album are Ong Ong, New World Towers, Pyongyang, Ice Cream Man, My Terracotta Heart, Ghost Ship. One thing that I would love to add is that I love Ong Ong music video with all my heart. It's really cute. I think Graham Coxon cockroach as many commenters already point out is the only cockroach that I would love to meet. And of course, how can I forget Ice Cream Damon, he's very adorable and his little dance at the end of the video is just extremely cute. Okay, last but not least is this 2014 Damon Albarn solo album, Everyday Robots. I actually bought this on a whim. I just happened to drive by to an ATM and I was thinking, uh, maybe I should buy Everyday Robots and so I did. I think this is a great album. It's a very personal album. Mainly the reason why I love it so much is that I just like hearing Damon sad on his songs. Is that sounds very psychotic? I don't know. I think there's a reason why Plastic Peach is my favorite Gorillaz album. Oops, spoiler. My favorite songs from this album is Everyday Robots, Lonely Press Play, Hostile, The Selfish Giant, You and Me, Photographs, The History of a Cheating Heart. Hollow Ponds. I think that's almost every track on this <laughs> LP. 
I can see why people would think that this is a mid album. It's very boring, but I still loved it anyway. Yes, of course, Mr. Tembo is very out of place on this album, but I still find value of it because Mr. Tembo and the story behind him was very cute and every time I listen to that song, I am reminded of an NME interview where Damon said that he played this song to Mr. Tembo and he shat himself. That is a real video, link in description. Smelling me with his trunk and then he sort of backed away and shot himself. Okay, that is all my non-gorilla stuff. Moving on to gorillas. I want to cover it in chronological discography order. Instead, I will cover it to the newest one. I got to the oldest because I have a lot of sentimental stories with this. To be honest, I kind of forgot the order of the album I got before the now now. So it's just an approximation, but I still remember the first few that I got. So I hope you don't mind that. Okay, let's start. Okay, I had to re-record this part because for some reason, the first time that I record this, it has no audio at all. I don't understand why. But anyway, this is a Demon Day CD and DVD collection. I just bought it recently and it's cheaper than I expected. I expected it to be like $30 or something, but I bought it for $13.5. I've been wanting this particular copy since 7 or 8th grade because the packaging is really really cool. In my opinion, the coolest thing about this particular packaging is that you can kind of mix and match the cover. Like one day you want Murdoch to be on the cover because you kind of feeling like you want Murdoch to stare at you while you sleep. Well, go ahead. Or maybe one day you want Russell to be on the cover because he deserves the spotlight. Well, you can do that right now. I think the power to customize album cover is just a massive appeal for me for this album. So my favorite songs on Demon Days are Last Living Souls, Kids With Guns, O Green World, Dirty Harry, Feel Good Ing, El Manana, Every Planet Will Reach is Dead, November Has Come, Fire Coming Out of Monkey's Head, Don't Get Lost in Heaven, and Demon Days. What can I say more? This album is definitely a classic. Please, Anthony Melantano, review it for a classic week. I am begging you. Please just listen to the commenters that have been commenting the exact same thing for like the past seven years or something. So next we have this weird gorilla cellular card thingy found on my country's equivalent of eBay. So basically this is a feature to refill your phone credits if that's the thing in the US. Basically you would scratch this part that is supposed to be silver and you'll see these numbers then call this number which is 888 and send these series of numbers and you'll gain phone credits. So future is pretty common here but this Gorillaz edition, I don't think it's pretty common. I didn't even know it exists before I saw the listing. So I naturally thought it was fake until I searched it up on Google and found this cellular card collector's blog and it's real it's very much real there's also a ringtone in the card <laughs> do you guys remember ringtone and the ringtones are in here were feel good ink dirty harry all alone there and clean eastwood so what if this is not like the others i mean all alone really among the singles it's kind of surprising to me since all alone itself wasn't really a popular choice in Demon Days non-singles. So I'm happy that I own one of the rarest Gorillaz memorabilia and I'm also surprised that Demon Days was popular enough in this country to have a phone credit feature from one of the biggest cell phone provider here. 
To give some perspective, if you ask people on the street what gorillas are in here, chances are nobody knows about it unless said person is in music community. So it's a pretty damn big deal. Next is Song Machine. I pre-ordered this album two weeks before the album itself was released and it arrived on January 31st. It got it to the point that I was fine if this album never arrived but it did. And when it arrived, I was extremely, extremely happy. I was actually making some art and craft shit to make myself happy about Song Machine on my notebook. And when I worked on it, it just arrived at my doorstep. Here is a snapgram proof of it. If you understand Indonesian, you'll understand how excited I am. So my favorite songs on this album are Valley of the Pagans, The Lost Chord, Aries, Pac-Man, The Pink Phantom, The Sole, and Momentary Bliss. Also, Aries is like top 10 gorilla song of all time. It's really a grower to me because I didn't like it that much when it was first released. But nowadays, this is actually my go-to song when I listen to Song Machine. My only criticism of the album is the packaging itself because they put the same Friday 13 artwork twice, one in the booklet and one in the box. Why? You could have just put every screen cap or the Pac-Man cover. I don't know, it's just very confusing and frustrates me. But yeah, this album is great and I hope the best for season 2. Next we have this Plastic Beach Japanese edition. This is the standard version, not much in here outside of the lyric book, hello! No more predicting the lyrics of Empire Ants, it is all in here. There's also a poster of Murdoch in here. In my opinion, posters is kind of worthless since it came in like this folded shape, so you can't really put it anywhere in your room. So, Plastic Beach is my favorite album. I like the entire track list. Well, not really. To be specific, it's White Flag, Rhinestone Eyes, Stylo, Super Fast Jellyfish, Empire and Some Kind of Nature, On Melancholy Hill, Broken, Sweepstake, To Binge, and Pirate Chat. Yeah, that's almost the entire track list. But I do not hate the rest of the album. Glitter Freeze is my least favorite but I still appreciate the experimental value of it, especially in the beginning where you can hear Morse code. Apparently, it spells out plastic beach, which is just extremely cool. Next, we have this Demon Days final. This costs like $31, really expensive in my opinion. So when it arrived, I wasn't home, so the mailman left it on the security in front of my neighborhood and updated the tracking to arrived at home. But when I was at home, I did not see the package, so I panicked. I thought I was scammed and I almost cried. But I found out about where the mailman left it and was extremely happy that it was not a scam. So another fun story is that there was a show and tell stuff in 12th grade and I was about to do a report about the history of CGI but I can't even do 3D modeling so nothing to show. Then my friend encouraged me to just show this final so I did. The reason why I didn't really want to show my final is that I was a gorillas fan in the closet in high school. It's because I find my middle school gorillas obsession cringe so in high school, I was just kind of repress it. So back to the show and tell. If my memories are right, the teacher was about to end the class, but my friends were like, hey, you should do a presentation on your final. It's really cool. And he saw my final and was very interested. And so he let me do the last presentation. And it makes me very happy. It was one of the happiest moments of my life. I'm just happy to give gorillas free positive cloud, you know. Next is this clean Eastwood single. I don't really have much to say outside that it's very cheap. It was like $2 and it has clean Eastwood and other songs in here. But it's still cool to have. 
Next we have the Now Now. So I bought it a few months after it was released because I was disappointed with humans and I just find the Now Now to be okay so it's not really an urgency to buy it or anything. My favorite songs on this album are Suk Ai, Kansas, Fireflies, Magic City, Hollywood, and Trance but just the live version. Now, spoiler alert, I did not care for Ace when the Now Now was released, but now I made an entire video of him in one hour length and it's just the first part, so yeah. My opinion on Ace changed to say the least. What a time to be alive, living in the picture blinging on my hotline. I wanna get freaky on camera, I suppose. Next we have The Fall. So this album is very video game s in my opinion. It's very 2D, it's very beepoo. I can see the appeal since this album has gained kind of a cult following in the fandom itself but it's just not for me. But my favorite songs on this album are Revolving Doors, Amarillo, Honor to Arizona, Snake in Dallas, and Aspen Forest. The box itself kind of looks like a KFC CD. It looks very cheap, understandable since it was released for free from what I remember. So about the KFC CD, I'm sure it's not a thing in the US, but basically KFC sells CD in my country, which is funny. I might make a video about it. It's kind of an interesting topic. Okay, next we have humans. As you already heard before, I was not a huge fan of this album, I'm sorry, but my favorite songs on here are She's My Color, Ascension, Let Me Out, Moments, but just a demo or the live version, then Andromeda, and Saturn's Bars, but not really the song itself, I mean the song is okay, but I have nostalgic value of Gorillaz returning for the first time. So the nostalgic value is that I was on 9th grade, just done tryout for national examination. Because of national examination preparation, basically this is a test if you want to enter high school. I didn't tune in for Saturn's Bar's premiere. So the moment that I've done the tryout is the moment that I first saw Saturn's bars and I was extremely, extremely happy. It was a cultural reset of my life and yes, I saw Murdoch's bear cock. However, if Murdoch's bear cock was removed shortly after the premiere, it means that I actually tuned in on the premiere. I don't know. The only thing I remember for sure is that it was on the same day as the tryout and I saw Murdoch's cock. Okay, Murdoch's cock aside, I like the packaging, it's pretty darn cool. Even if I didn't enjoy humans that much, I'm happy to own this deluxe version at its full price. Zero regrets. Next we have this gorilla shoes. Yes, I know the shoes are kind of damaged. I'm sorry. I was in 8th grade when I bought it. And the next thing I regret is that I threw out the whole shoe box. Biggest regret of my life. Anyway, this is size 36. It doesn't fit in my feet anymore so I rarely wear it. I was actually about to wear it on prom because I started to open up about my gorilla's interest but you know, a certain virus came and it cancelled the whole thing. And I was very disappointed just like any other high schooler at the time. Anyway, this is a very expensive shoes. It was $41. I saved up my lunch money to buy it then actually deposited those money on my friend's bank account so that my mom won't find out that I purchased this much. Eventually, my mom find out and was like, oh, yeah, okay, it's cool, as long as you don't steal or whatever. So next, we have this bootleg Gorillaz Middle School notebook. This is a notebook for my math class in 8th grade. The story behind this is very interesting. So the teacher had this exclusive lesson where you can pay to have the questions for the upcoming quiz and even fix your answer if you didn't reach the minimum score to pass. 
Yes, this is a very scummy practice. I actually joined the lesson because I didn't know about this shit, but when I realized that it was like that, I left the lesson. So I studied with this very notebook and are actually able to have good scores without joining his lesson. If only I have this much studying motivation nowadays. Also, this is one of the only good things from 8th grade. I was kind of a jerk and a big me girl, but I've changed, you know, I've learned. And to those who I have hurt in the past, I am very sorry. Okay, back to the album. Next, we have G-Sides. This album is very hard to find. I was really lucky to find it on Instagram of all places. It cost like $6 from what I remember. My favorite songs from this album were Laugh Hand Suzuki Method, Fast, Ghost Train, and 1-2-D-3. Yeah, it's clear that this album is a b-side. It doesn't have the same power as the actual album itself. But it's still a really good b-side and controversial opinion. I actually prefer Latin Simone English version. Did I spell that right? I'm so sorry. Also, as I mentioned on my Ace Files, 2D is wearing a Mojo t-shirt on this album, which is very funny if you consider the fact that another Powerpuff Girls member is joining the band later. Next, we have T-Sides, the B-Sides to Demon Days, and I absolutely love the booklet. It's so good. I love Jamie's unfinished sketches so much. In my opinion, this is still the best Gorillaz booklet of all time. But as the, for the album itself, yeah, it's a B-side. It's clear why this wasn't included in the album, but it's still a really damn good B-side. A lot of these songs are really good. It's just that it doesn't fit in within the Demon Days teaming. My favorite songs on this album are 68 State, Hong Kong Town, We Are Happy Landfill, Highway Under Construction, Rock It, Bill Murray, Spitting Out the Demons, and My Waifu is God. Next, we have Gorilla's High Bonus. So, High is actually an Indonesian music magazine that was, I believe, was shut down last year, but I could be wrong. But anyway, I have an entire thread of what's in this CD outside of the songs itself. Basically, it just has cool wallpapers, but it also has malware, so I never bother to open it again. Next, we have this the singles collections for their, I believe, 10th or 11th anniversary. And all I can say about this album is that it is regrettable. I mean, it's a cool album, I love the single so much, but I imported this shit when there's actually a local copy available on online store with 4 times less the price that I bought. I feel like I was just wasting my money here. Another thing that I would love to point out that someone on Pitchfork actually gave this album a higher rating than Demon Days, which is just insane to me. This is just a goddamn compilation album. The editor on Pitchfork is really weird. Next, we have this Demon Day CD. I bought this in used condition and it was absolutely fucking wrecked. As you can see here, there were so much cracks, but at the same time, Demon Day's copies were rare. So I'll take what I can get. Nowadays, Demon Days are fairly common and it's now plastic which turned to be rare, very sad. Anyway, I bought it when I was on a field trip and this was sent through like FedEx, but not really. Like imagine if Uber has a FedEx where you can ship stuff instantly. So basically there was a miscommunication in the shipping. The driver thought the shipping will be paid at arrival, but the seller said it was already paid by him with the money I sent. So long story short, my mom kinda got mad at me when I was at the field trip, but it worked out in the end. 
Another fun story is that once in a family field trip, my parents passed me the aux cord and they told me to play whatever I want. So I played the entire Demon Days and nobody liked it. <laughs> Looking back at it, it was a mix of both hilarious and cringe. But at the time, I was just vibing. I was too busy listening to Demon Days to even care about my family's opinion on gorillas. So yeah, that was how much I love gorillas when I was in middle school. Next, we have this Gorilla CD. I'm actually not sure if this is a bootleg copy or not because the CD itself isn't printed in camo like many other CD that I found on the internet, but it contains Murdoch's Windbago Key. So I think even if it's bootleg, it's a darn good bootleg. My favorite songs from this self-titled LP is 5 slash 4, Tomorrow Comes Today, Clean Eastwood, Man Research, Punk, Soundcheck, Double Bass, Rock the House, and 19 2000. I think Fantano once said that this album ended up in so many thrift stores because it's nothing like the single and that kind of sums up my thoughts on the album except that I do not find the non-singles bad at all and I will never sell this to a thrift store. I love this copy of the album with all my heart, okay? But still, this album is just not as strong as Demon Days or Plastic Page, but it's still a valid debut album. Next, we have this Gorillaz cassette tape. It's very cheap. I think I bought it for like $2. I think it's also pretty rare in internationally, but in my country, it's not really rare. Hence why I got it quite cheap. Someday, I will get the D-Sides and G-Sides cassette tape though. So anyway, this is quite a cool copy and I hope that this isn't a bootleg. So next we have this Plastic Beach Standard Edition CD and in my honest opinion, the album does not deserve this barebone packaging. I mean, the booklet only has two Gorillaz Plastic Beach artwork. What the fuck? Demon Days has 15. Sure, it's not as detailed as these, but I believe Jamie Hewlett already finished his Plastic Beach artwork at the time the album was about to be released. So. All you need is print that shit. I know when you load this on PC, there's a link for a digital copy of the artwork, but first of all, Gorillaz did not know how to archive their shit, so it's all gone. Second, I want the fucking physical copy anyway, because physical copy is much better. Another thing that I would like to point out that the booklet kind of faded over time. Now it kind of has this yellow tint. I'm not sure if it's visible on camera, but when I first got this, it did not look like this. This is, in my opinion, the worst Gorillaz album packaging. I think Plastic Beach deserves better. The deluxe version is indeed better, but the Now Now, Demon Days, Gorillaz, and Song Machine are good, even in the standard edition. Humans is kind of bare bones from what I remember, but my point still stands, Plastic Beach deserve a better standard release. Oh my god, I have so much sentimental values for this particular copy. So this is Demon Day's cassette tape. This is my first Gorillaz album that I got. So basically the story behind this is that it was at night and me and my family were buying Martabak, which is basically pancakes but much thicker and has fillings inside. So I've been loving gorillas for a while and I saw someone on Instagram selling this particular Demon Days cassette tape and it was pretty cheap. I think it was $1.5. So I was on 7th grade so I didn't have an ATM card privilege. It, this is not a credit card by the way. So I asked my mom, hey, can I buy this album, please? I never ordered anything online before. So my mom was kind of skeptical because she was afraid that I will be scammed. But eventually I convinced her that this is not a scam. 
and bought it for me and three days later it arrived and wow i was amazed i have tune days i have the official copy or tune days holy shit this is like mind-blowing so i went upstairs to the old stereo that i used to have that has a cassette tape player now that stereo is gone after my house was renovated so it's sad but anyway i played it on the cassette tape player and I listened to the entire album and I was at peace. It was one of the highlights of my entire life. And at this moment, I just knew that I couldn't be content with just having one Gorillaz album. So I ended up collecting almost all of them. It was a moment that changed my life both in a good way and a bad way. It's good because collecting albums indeed brings me joy. but. It's bad because, surprise surprise, collecting albums cost a lot of money. I think I spent like 200 to 400 dollars for Gorillaz alone. And I've never ever spent money this much for other things in life. So yeah, this Demon Days cassette tape indeed changed my life both for the better and worse. But somehow, I couldn't help but feel grateful for it. Yes, that is all my collection. Not as much as other Gorilla Stan's collections out there because I'm not made of money and stuff that I wanted is sold on eBay and I just can't afford to pay the shippings. Also, I don't have PayPal yet. It's the reason why I don't have a Gorilla's figurines because those are so fucking expensive in here. It's more expensive than the laptop I edited this video on. Anyway, what albums do you have on your Gorilla's collection? What is your most prized Gorilla's memorabilia? Please let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in December with hopefully a new Ace Files hashtag always plugging in. See you! Lying to the Zilla, cloning Shinji's mother, made her clone on Monday, soon I'll make another.